Have you ever wondered why your parents are so concerned about your room being clean? Well, it might just be because some small things to you might be bigger things to other people. This story is relevant to each one of us because sometimes we forget how much our um, actions can impact others. And my name is Kiara, and I'm an intro into communication student at the University of Arkansas Little Rock. Today I'm going to tell you all about the service learning that I um, completed this previous weekend. First I'm going to tell you all about what I did at my service learning and then I'm going to explain one communication principle and two concepts in addition to an ethical implication that is prevalent to my service learning and then lastly I'll talk about what I can do to improve my communication in my environment. So again I completed my um, service learning at Race for the Cure. Um, this should be it's important to all of us because whether we're going through cancer or we know someone who's had cancer or we know of someone who knows of someone who has cancer, um, this, the mission of my organization, according to www.5.coman.org, it emphasizes three ideals. The first is to save lives. Um, another important thing to them is to accomplish the critical needs of their community, their community being those with breast cancer. And then the last is to accomplish the first two ideas by investing into breakthrough um, research to prevent or find a cure for breast cancer. Um, I had to be at Race for the Cure at 5.30 in the morning. Um, they were already almost out of t-shirts for the volunteers. Um, it, was, it was about 40 degrees. But everyone was energetic, everybody was ready to help. Um, the races were there before some of the volunteers just walking around. Um, they brought energy to our table. Um, it was downtown Little Rock. We were there, depending on where you were, you were there for about four hours to about when the race was going. Um, there wasn't anywhere for us to warm up. There wasn't anywhere for us to go inside, so we were all freezing. Um, so I helped them with their mission by saving lives. Um, we were passing out scarves, and the scarves were, well, they weren't free, but if they participated in the race, they had to pay um, about $30. And so just getting one of the scarves was a part of um, the package. And the scarf technically helps to raise money for those with breast cancer for research because that's where the $30 went. Some of the tasks I performed were, we ran out of the scarves early, so um, that was only about two hours of our service, and after that, we were pretty much just breaking down boxes um, and walking around to see if anybody else needed help. Um, moving on, I have a communication principle and two communication concepts that are connected to my service. Um, this is important because we should all recognize how important our um, communication can be. Um, in our lives and how it affects the people we talk to. The communication principle that I found relevant was that communication is irreversible and according to the Euler Survival Guide 2018, the definition is a dynamic process that cannot be reversed. Um, it says that there are no do-overs. Some of the people, we have to tell them that we can only give one scarf per person and they were kind of upset and so they would frown, but then they would be like, it's okay, but they had already conveyed to us that they were upset that we could only give them one um, scarf, so them saying that it was okay was basically a lie. Um, <laughs> the first commu another communication concept was defensive listening, and according to Adler, Rodman, and Dupree 2017, it's a response style in which the receiver um, perceives a speaker's comment as an attack. And so while we were telling them that we could only give one scarf per person, some of them were saying that their family members were across the street or that they were in wheelchairs, but there were people standing behind us saying, like, no, like, they have to come over here. We do this every year. But they were looking at us like we didn't believe what they were saying. We knew that they had family members um, in the survivor section, and we knew that some of them weren't able to come to our table because it was across the street. But we were doing what we were told. Um, what we were told to do. And then the second concept was, according to Robin Dupree, Dupree and Adler in 2017, um, is effect, I did effect displays and it's body movements or vocal traits that reveal emotional states. Um, people 
people were running out of bags, and so they would come to our table asking for bags, but we were telling them that we only had um, scarves. And we could tell by their facial expressions when we did run out of the scarves, in addition to other tables running out of the bags. Um, these two ladies, if we took a picture of them because they were, they were at our table for a little minute. They came behind the table. Um, making sure we were out of scars, and we're like, we're just out of these scars. Like, um, so the lady on the left, you can see she was a little bit devastated. And because they collect scars every year, so that was, it was three tables, and it was 12 of us running the table. That's how popular the scars were. Um, most of the tables had about five or six people, but we doubled it. Um, to continue, my service learning helped me to see that I can use my um, communication and ethical implications to improve my um, community and my communication and my community. So the communication that I, concept that I chose for this was um, advising response from, and according to Adler Rodman Dupree 2017, it's a health and response in which the receiver offers suggestions about this, um, how the speaker should deal with the problem. So instead of telling them that we were just out of scarves, I could have told them that there were other booths that they could go to to get other things that were included in the $30 that they had paid. But um, me and my group members, we kind of just told them like we're out of scarves, so they were at a loss for hope. But we could have explained to them that there were a lot of other things there that they could have went to get. Um, well, apparently we ran out of the scarves faster than normal. Um, so normally they run out at about eight or nine, and we ran out at about 7.30, we were closer mm -hmm. to eight. Um, an ethical implication that I chose, <laughs> an ethical <laughs> implication that I chose um, was to, was integrity, and according to the Euler Survival Guide 2018, it's to hold people accountable to the same standards that I hold myself accountable to. Um, this is important because some of the people were passing out five to ten scarves to one person when our advisor would walk away, which is pretty much why we ran out so soon. Um, so if, we, if I expect them to listen to the, um, our advisor, I couldn't say, well, she told us to give one scarf out, but turn around and give five when she left. Um, but to conclude, today I told you all about the service learning that I completed at Race for the Cure. Um, I explained what I did in my service learning, um, ethical, and ethical. I explained one communication principle and two communication concepts that are related to my service learning. And I mentioned one ethical implication and another communication concept that could help me to improve my communication and environment. And so the next time that your parents ask you to clean your room, just think about how important it can be for them.